Yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, hello everybody. Uh, so we can get started. So this is a presentation about CDC event-driven cloud native application with OpenShift. I'm a senior consultant at Red Hat. Uh, so CDC, uh, CDC is a design pattern used for event-driven cloud native app. And a lot of time we use it with OpenShift. It continuously identify and capture incremental data changes. And you can see this happen in real time data replication across many databases and replication through transaction logs. It trigger event based data changes and capture and propagate the event to microservices within your system. Um, so CD, CDC is based on upstream DBCM project. It work with Spring Boot application um, and integrate with OpenShift. Uh, why do we want to use CDC, right? Uh, CDC increase in data collection, right? Um, you can, a lot of time query takes time, especially when you have a large database with, with growing sizes and growing data in the database. CDC will um, basically only focus on the change, right? You look at the delta, you look at the data get, get change and, and add on the data specifically. So that means you don't need to query the entire database. And this is super fast and has a lot of performance improvement. Um, you don't need to do a full DB import and export, right? That takes time. And again, you know, this is a real time data replication and that become possible by looking at just the delta. So change data capture, um, when we integrate as Spring Boot application running the BCM and monitor the transaction logs. Um, in this case, I'm going to show you an example how to monitor, monitor transaction log through the uh, table called a student table in a Postgres database. Then uh, we have a Spring Boot application configured with the BCM connector that will invoke a listener method. When the record got updated in the student table, the, um, the, the invoker will notify the listener. So this method will sync the database in the student index on the elastic search. So this is a high level architecture uh, about what we could do with CDC. On the left side, you have Postgres database, you have um, different transaction coming in. You could insert uh, a record into the student table. You could update a student record. You could delete a student record. And the Postgres database is using port 5432. And every time we have a transaction log from the student table, it got sent to the CDC relay, which is a DPCM object. And uh, this is using port 8080. And then at the end, we uh, use uh, the DPCM to propagate the update, insert, delete into Elasticsearch. Um, in Elasticsearch, you have a student index that basically uh, allow you to index and, and, and search for the specific changes through the transaction log. So the po Postgres database, um, yeah, as you see in the uh, architecture diagram, it is using port 5432, five, Elasticsearch on port 9200 HTTP and 9300 transport. Um, in OpenShift, we use a template to create Postgres database and Elasticsearch instances. It's super simple, it's just a YAML, two YAML file, and you could create the two objects. DBCM and Postgres image allow, allow the extraction of changes committed to the transaction logs, right? Um, and this is a foundation of CDC. Um, if you look at the Postgres deploy template, um, this is one uh, deploy for creating the, the deployment for, for Postgres. And as you see, we uh, specify the, the name as Postgres. We specify the container, the um, environment name, uh, the, the, the database called StudentDB.
So hello, Abe. I guess uh, we are losing the connection with you, and you are not. Can you hear me? Just a lot. Yeah, now we can hear you. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna. Just... So um, yeah, I'm going to uh, go over the slide and can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Perfect. Yeah. So um, yeah. So 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 I was talking about the Elasticsearch deployment template. Um, this is where we specify the template that, uh, dep uh, deployment definition for Elasticsearch. This is getting the uh, image from Docker Elastic uh, .co for the Elastic Search version 6.8. Specify the port number 9200 and 9300. 9200 for HTTP, 9300 for transport. Uh, that's the template. And then we have the Elastic Search uh, surface template. We specify the kind as a surface. All you need is specify the port number 9200 and 9300 and the selector to be Elasticsearch. So now you have the four YAML file definition from the last four screen. All you need is to go to uh, OCRPI-F, uh, apply the change for Elasticsearch deployment, Elasticsearch surface, Postgres deployment, Postgres surface. Now you've got four objects created. Um, so the next step, you could look at the Postgres student table. This is the definition of the student table. We have the ID field, uh, which is the primary key. You have the address of the student, the email, and the name of each student. And, and then um, after, after the configuration, you could start cloning the uh, project. The project is in my Git repository. Is a Java uh, Spring Boot application. After you clone the project, you could open the uh, pom.xml uh, pom, pom file and look at the YAML dependency. You could see that we are using um, I, uh, DBCM as a dependency. We have the um, DBCM embedded and also the DBCM connector Postgres. So these are the two objects we need for this project. And then you have the CDC listener. The CD, C listener, uh, the constructor, uh, the class the constructor load the configuration and set a callback method for the handle event. The handle event method is invoked when a transaction is performed. The embedded engine class is a wrapper for the connector that manage the, uh, the, the connector lifecycle. And this is the the, con uh, the constructor that we talked about in the last screen. The CDC listener uh, basically take take a student connector, take a student surface, and then uh, inside the constructor it create using the embedded engine from DBCM. It create uh, and configure the engine. Uh, the engine is using student connector, and then it has a notify method to notify the handle event when a transaction is happening. Um, so this is the configuration for the embedded engine. And, and then we set the student surface to the student surface of the class. So the start method is called when the BCM engine is initialized and started asynchronously using the executor, right? And then the end method is called when the connector is being destroyed. Uh, this will stop the DBCM and merging the executor. The handle event method is invoked when a transaction is performed on the student table. The handle event method will also identify what operation took place and call the student surface to perform the create, update, delete on the elastic search. Uh, so for the uh, private executor, right? This is how we create an executor using the BCM object, executor.new single thread executor. And then once you have the executor, you have two methods, the start and stop method. The start method, you would call the executor to execute the engine. The stop method will check if the engine is not null, we're going to stop the engine. 
And then the uh, the handle method we talked about in the last screen, uh, it takes the source record. And then um, using the uh, source record value, it will check, right? Uh, based on the operation, if it's not read, right? If it's read, we don't care, right? It's not, it's not making any changes. If it's not read, right? We will go through and create a, a message map. Uh, if this is a delete, Hello, it, uh, we are not able to hear you. So I guess we have some you, internet. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, now? hello. So yeah, yeah, it's fine now. Yeah, so it was a uh, internet connection issue. Yeah. Yeah. No so problem. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, so going back to the slide, the student connector listen to the change from the student table using the Postgres connector class from the DBCM object. Offset storage keep track of how much data has been processed from the transaction log. This is helpful when you have database connectivity issue. Um, the, the, the code can go back to the uh, offset storage and keep track of how much has, data has been processed and pick up the next data that needs to be processed when the connection come back. Um, yeah, exactly. It would uh, it could re, uh, resume from the last failure point when an error occur. The file offset backing store class is used to store the offset in the local file, right? So, so since this is in a local file, if you don't have a connection issue, if you have a connection problem, it still can read, uh, read, read the information from for the file offset. The connector will record the offset in the file for the new change. The BCM engine will flush the offset based on the flush interval. Right? Once the data has been processed, it could flush every five minutes and delete the offset. Um, so the DBCM connector configuration um, class um, you have a student connector uh, method that will return the um, the BCM con configuration, and it, it the configuration is created based on the con connector name, offset storage, offset storage file name, the flush interval. In this case, is flush every sixty minute. Um, the name, the Postgres connector, the database server name, host name, port, user password, DB name, and so on, right? So all these different configuration parameter were part of the DBCM connect, con, uh, configuration. From the student surface, uh, the main, um, there's a method called maintain read model method that handle update, insert, and delete. The student repository is an interface that performs the quad operation on the database. So the maintain read model uh, basically create a mapper um, and then create a student object, right? convert the student object uh, from the student data into a student class. And then you check, right? If this is, uh, the, if the operator is delete, then it's going to um, go using the uh, student repository, which is an interface to delete the student by ID. If this is, otherwise, if this is a save, we're going to call the uh, student repository to save, save the student object. So now we have the different pieces in the Java code. The next step is to look at the deployment to OpenShift. When we deploy this uh, class, I usually call uh, OC new app, right? You created your project first, right? OC new project, um, you know, uh, whatever project you want to call it. 
And then inside the project, you call OC new app, you specify the git URL, you specify the context directory. Um, this is a, a, a Java app. I use it. You can use a CDC Wildfly 13. And then you will do, do and deploy the apps for you in OpenShift. Um, once the deployment is complete, you could do OC get surface. Uh, then you should be able to see the, uh, the three different services. Now you have a surface for CDC, which is coming from the uh, Git repository, the Java code. You have the Elasticsearch, you have the Postgres database service. Um, so the next step is to expose each one of them. You can call the OC expose surface CDC, expose surface on Elasticsearch, and also expose surface on Postgres so that you can call the, the, the raw from external. Yep, and after that, all you need is to call the OC get raw and it will, call you, it will show you the wow for, for the free services. So uh, Postgres database transaction, uh, when the query, the query can do an insert, update, and delete record from the student data, from the student table. So each query could trigger, will trigger a CDC event on the Elasticsearch, right? So these are the simple query that we could use for testing insert into a student table with the ID name, address, email specified inside the value. Update students set the email to a specific email address where the, based on the ID equals one, or you can delete the student based on the student ID. So now uh, you have the, um, the application deploy up to OpenShift. You could uh, do some testing. Uh, so what you could do, uh, you- Hello, if we are not able to hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, no, it's there must be an internet issue. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, so, uh, so we were talking about how to test the CDC. Uh, so, for the insert scenario, you go into the uh, Postgres instance, uh, run the insert query into the Postgres database. Um, and then at, after that, you can immediately do a curl command call the Elasticsearch endpoint and make sure that um, the Elasticsearch will return the object that you just created, right? ID one with the name, with the address and the email address. So that's the insert scenario. The update scenario is also similarly, you can connect to the Postgres database on the upgrade update query. And then you could do a curl command on the Elasticsearch and this time you see that the um, the email get updated based on the upgrade query to geo at gmail.com. The delete scenario, uh, similarly, you go to a Postgres database, delete the student where ID equals one, right? And after that, um, you do a curl command on the Elasticsearch instance, then you will see ID one had uh, uh, no na name, address and email after the record got de deleted. So um, yeah, in conclusion, you see um, from the presentation, CDC work really well with cloud native OpenShift and then enable a very easy, highly distributed uh, event driven, trans transactional log driven, stateful microservices deployment, right? Um, and the event uh, stream created based on log level change. Um, all the application listen to event and perform action based on the data change. You can see for uh, based on you know insert, update, delete, or read. It, you can do different uh, different action. It provide uh, consistency and also port portability using the BCM connector. Um, and you can use the BCM connector to monitor record level change in the database and publish the change to uh, streaming service such as Kafka or AMQ, right? Um, so we can extend the implementation to even more distributed system using Kafka and AMQ. Distributed Kafka, Kafka connector cluster uh, also provide high, high availability, scalability, and uh, fault tolerance to improve the performance of your application and system, right? The architecture is open source project and work well with any programming languages or development framework. So uh, yeah, that's a high level uh, CDC introduction with OpenShift. Um, so if you guys want to um, uh, play around with it, 
um, um, get the slide um, from the Git repository that I posted on the chat. Um, and then you can uh, start deploying that into your own, own OpenShift instance and start doing some more customization, right? So this is the link to the uh, CTC project. Cool. Um, so that's all I want to talk about. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Abe. Uh, that was a great presentation. I love it. Uh, so if anybody have any question, they can unmute themselves and ask a question over here. OK. Any any question? Uh, any people who wants to ask question for that? OK, yeah, if, if no more question, you can always ping me offline. Um, I'm more, more than happy to help out with any CDC projects. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks again.